Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Megan and I'm a student ambassador from Macquarie University. Uh, today we have Associate Professor Adam Stowe here with us to give us a snapshot of the Masters of Conservation Biology program here at Macquarie, um, as well as the potential career options, future opportunities and pathways to various career uh, trajectories through this degree, which could be in things like environmental consulting or conservation policy making. Um, and so before we start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the country throughout Australia uh, and their continuing connection to the land, waters and community. Uh, we pay our respects to them and their culture and elders past, present and future. So now I'm going to hand over to uh, Associate Professor Stowe and he is going to take us through a presentation about this degree. Thank you. Thanks so much, Megan. Uh, yes, so it's uh, my pleasure to uh, tell you about the Masters of uh, Conservation Biology. Uh, as Megan said, it's um, appropriate for uh, conservation practitioners, those that are aiming to develop a career uh, in, in conservation management, and also those that are already in that career and wish to um, skill up and, and uh, and learn new attributes to improve their, improve their work. So I guess the central theme uh, that we're interested in, um, uh, in terms of conservation management, is the conservation of, of biodiversity. And you know, what we're going through now is a, a period of time that's, that's often referred to as the Anthropocene. And we're seeing massive losses of, of biodiversity through, through human actions. And of course, that's got a whole bunch of uh, impacts that we're rather concerned about, uh, not the least of which are the ecosystem services that this biodiversity provides. So what, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity is the variety of life uh, on Earth, and it, it, it can be viewed at the genetic level, at the species level, and at the ecosystem level. And, in the Masters of uh, Conservation Biology, we address each of those levels of, of biodiversity. Okay, so, so that's what our primary sort of focus is, the, the underlying narrative of the, uh, the Masters of uh, uh, Conservation Biology is dealing with biodiversity, dealing with biodiversity conservation. And at Macquarie, uh, within the Department of Biology, uh, we have a number of researchers that that focus specifically on a whole range of attributes of biodiversity. So we have geneticists that are looking at the evolutionary relationships among different organisms and resolving taxonomic questions. We've got behavioural ecologists that, that are working on how individuals behave in different environments and how that behaviour itself can be valuable knowledge when it comes to conserving species in the wild. We've also got biologists that look at invasive species, both animals and plants, and how best to manage them. We work in terrestrial environments, we work in aquatic environments, and the marine environment. So we cover the whole spectrum when it comes to uh, biodiversity-based research. Okay, and you know, we've got researchers that are working on, on, on sharks, on, on reptiles, on a range of invertebrates, uh, including uh, pollinators, um, one of the most important ecosystem services that are provided by, by nature is, is in fact pollination. And we're seeing the crisis unfolding currently of having a lack of, lack of pollinators. And we've got some groundbreaking research occurring in all of those areas. So these researchers will be teaching directly into the uh, Masters of um, Conservation. Okay. So if you're interested in looking up and learning more about the staff that we've got uh, in the Department of Biology, there's a, a link here that you can, can go to and, and look at everyone's uh, profile and the type of research uh, that they do. And the other thing that I'll make note of is that the the, the research and the, 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 the lecturers that we'll be teaching into this, this program uh, contributed towards the Department of Biology being ranked well above world standard in the excellence in research scores in 2010, 2012, 2015, and 2018. So there's really a great bunch of people that are, and, and a, a, 
very accomplished bunch of people that are teaching into this program. So what are the key features of the program? Well, you'll, you'll learn how to manage human activities in order to uh, protect the environment for future generations. This is a theme that we're hearing more and more about in the media. And we aim to provide the, uh, provide the skills to manage with a basis in scientific, uh, scientific fact, okay? So as I mentioned, you'll be, be taught by world leading uh, academics. Um, and, and what we're particularly focusing on is the biological and management skills that can be addressed in a multidisciplinary way. And there's a very strong focus on, on practical work, uh, both in the field, but we also provide laboratory experience as well. And one of the most important things that we really try to generate is the ability to critically evaluate information. We, we really want to develop problem solving ability and all the sorts of skills that are required by a range of uh, employers in this, uh, in this area. So let me tell you a little bit about the, uh, the course structure. Okay, so depending on uh, your background, okay, so to enter into the program, you need to have had at least experience with one undergraduate unit that uh, involves biology or an equivalent uh, skill set uh, that you may have gained through uh, employment. And then there are some foundation units that you may need to do if you haven't done an extensive undergraduate degree in biology, and they include uh, statistics. Um, learning about skills with uh, biological data analysis, and then you get a choice uh, among units that include uh, genetics, uh, life processes, ecology, evolution, and diversity of life. Okay, so they're the sorts of foundation units that you may need to do if you haven't had a full uh, undergraduate degree in uh, biology that covers those, those topics. So assuming that you have that, that background, then you can launch straight into the, uh, into the masters, which can take up to uh, two years, depending on um, how much um, recognition for prior learning you might be, um, it might be available to you. Okay, so for the uh, core zone of the, uh, the, the masters, these are the, the units that you, that you have to do. Uh, we've got uh, two, uh, units that are, are, are based on, on either internships or research and practice. Okay, this is where you join lab groups and you get experience in a range of different endeavours with uh, uh, lab groups that are involved in, in conservation. Okay, so it might be uh, biological uh, research experience. This is where you actually carry out your own research under the supervision of, of somebody within a research group. And um, the other unit, uh, conservation in practice, uh, you can have an internship, um, and it doesn't have to be at Macquarie. We, we can place you in institutions outside of Macquarie where you gain uh, experience in, in, a, in, in an environment of your choice. We have students that end up at uh, Taronga Zoo or the Australian Museum or, or even further afield, even overseas, if, if possible. Okay, so. These are the core units here. You can see there's a range of different uh, topics that are covered, including climate change, uh, contemporary conservation issues in Australia, uh, global issues are covered, and also uh, what is quite a critical skill uh, for a lot of um, employers, and that is uh, geographic uh, information uh, science, so GIS. So these are the sorts of things that are included in the, uh, the core zone. And then, uh, there is an extra 40 credit points uh, that you can choose. So that's an extra four subjects that you can choose uh, from a flexible zone. And, and they cover all sorts of topics, law, um, uh, sustainability, um, or any of the other biology focused uh, units that are listed there on the website. So you can check that out. So the sorts of professions that uh, you, you might be interested in, and, and this, this program will uh, set you up for, 
uh, include environmental sustainability officers, environmental consultants, environmental scientists. Uh, you might be involved in land care. Um, the local councils as an environmental officer, uh, national parks managers, or even research. We do have a number of students that actually transition from doing the coursework masters into a research focused career where they end up uh, going down that research focused pathway. So there's a, a, a range of different um, uh, professions that uh, this program can lead to and the sorts of employers uh, that will um, be looking for graduates uh, from the Masters of Conservation Biology uh, include catchment management authorities. Um, there's a range of environmental consultancies that have employed our graduates. Uh, there's government environment departments like uh, OEH uh, or DPI. Um, and then there's also non-government organisations like the Australian Wildlife Conservancy or, or Bush Heritage. So there's a range of different uh, employers that have um, taken up our, our graduates after successfully graduating from the Masters of Conservation Biology. So I think that's the, the, the summary that I, I wish to provide. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it there, Megan, and um, for, the, uh, for the presentation side of things. Awesome, thank you so much. That was a really great presentation. Um, so we do have some questions about various things to do with the Masters of Conservation Biology. Uh, so first off, we understand that conserving the environment has become a massive global priority. Um, and this inter industry has a lot of potential ahead in terms of you know trying to combat climate change or environmental destruction, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of careers, uh, it's quite inspiring that we could become an environmental consultant or a conservation policy maker by doing this degree. Um, mm -hmm. Can you share some tips and give us some examples on the career path to these jobs? And uh, yeah, maybe some opportunities that come up in this degree for previous students. Um, sure. Uh, and look, Megan, you're exactly right. And it's, I mean, it's it's been very much um, uh, in our face if you. I put it that way, over, over recent years, the sorts of um, environmental management activities that are needed, just with respect to climate change and, and fire management, there's been some uh, emerging issues that, that, that are attracting a lot of attention. Uh, so how do you go about um, getting involved and developing your career path in these directions? Well, you know, one of the things that um, we strongly advise while doing the master's program is that during the internship type units, you, you, you choose a placement uh, in a, an industry where you're keen to develop contacts and, and develop your network. And then you can draw upon that network to, um, you know, uh, develop your, your, your career path after graduating. And I guess the other point that I'd make uh, with respect to that is that you also develop your network with your, with your peers while you're going through and, and, and doing the master's program. And, and I know that students, uh, you know, develop um, very long lasting friendships and, and, and uh, connections uh, with, with other students that have done the, uh, done the course. And look, you know, Normal circumstances, we've got uh, a very high proportion of uh, international uh, students. So you end up with a network, uh, almost a global network, which you can draw upon uh, to access careers in those areas. Yeah, definitely. It's really encouraging. Um, I'm doing a master's course at the moment here at Macquarie, and it's definitely so true that you meet so many people and make so many connections to really help you leapfrog into whatever it is that you are passionate about. Um, so there's ongoing discussions on whether we should always pursue our passion first or if we should put employability first. I know for me, I'm really passionate about marine science, but it's definitely something that's quite uh, relevant for me is I might not be able to find a job when I finish my master's. Um, and I guess particularly for this degree, you have to be very passionate about conservation and those sorts of um, topics. So could you tell us a bit more about how you've pursued your passions uh, into this area of study and what actually motivated you to do this? Yeah, happy to, Megan. Um, just first up, what I'd say uh, to that before I talk about my own experience is, um, you know, I would say, uh, 
pursue your passion. Um, and with respect to the master's uh, program, um, pursue your passion in terms of the topics that you might choose where there's flexibility uh, in that respect. Because what you find is that there are a whole bunch of skills that are embedded in each of those units that are fairly generic and so they're transferable. So even if, you know, you didn't end up uh, initially, um, you know, going down the pathway that you initially thought you would, uh, you'll find that a lot of the, the skills that you learn um, are actually quite transferable. So I say just go with the passion and you're actually learning a whole bunch of transferable um, generic skills anyway in a, in a lot of cases. And for the really specific skills, well, they're usually fairly broad in application as well, like, like GIS. Uh, my own experience is, yes, definitely um, driven by, by passion. So prior to actually uh, starting up um, uh, in, the, in the role that I've currently got, I initially trained following my undergraduate degree as a, as a teacher uh, with the primary aim of, of getting involved in environmental education. So environmental education was my passion. And I did that for a number of years, uh, teaching uh, at a range of different levels. And then I decided that I wanted to pursue research and I, I gained my doctorate and, and, and got um, postdoctoral experience and, and eventually um, ended up with a, an academic position. Uh, so as you can see from that backdrop, uh, the the, the type, of, type of work that I do now, both in terms of teaching and my research is also very conservation-based, mm -hmm. uh, stems from a, uh, a, a, a very strong interest in that, in that area. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Um, so for this industry, which I can tell that you've had a lot of experience in various fields, which is really cool. Um, given that it's such a niche market, I guess, practical experience is probably the main thing that employers are looking for uh, in, in potential employees. Um, and so what are your advices on multitasking doing and doing a degree to gain work experience and industry experience? Yeah, uh, look, we, we, we do have a strong emphasis on a lot of that, on practical experience for the exact reason that you gave. Uh, you know, it's something that employers uh, are looking for. Uh, and I guess um, my advice with that respect over and above uh, the um, focus that the Masters of Conservation Biology program has on those sorts of practical applications is that if time's available, um, Volunteer, you know, get yourself involved uh, with different different research um, groups and different re research activities. Again, all it does is just build up your your network of contacts and improves your opportunities for um, for future employment. Definitely. I can definitely speak to volunteering um, through my study at Macquarie. I've gotten involved with a bunch of random projects from measuring the growth of algae on seawalls to looking at deep ocean sediments. So there's a lot of opportunities at Macquarie, which I've definitely benefit, benefited from. And I know that a lot of my cohort has as well, which is awesome. Um, now, so many people are seeking opportunities uh, for a career switch. Um, so what are some of the transferable skills that are necessary uh, to enable a effective career switch to this degree um, and to become a future environmental consultant? What would you suggest? What, uh, so the sorts of skills that you, you might have already obtained that, that could be transferred to this, this program uh, involve just sort of general numeric skills and general skills with uh, communication and, and um, uh, written language skills. I mean, they're all, all trans transferable and, and, and critical to success in just about any, any endeavour. Uh, with respect to the sorts of uh, learning outcomes from, from the master's program itself, you know, uh, I kind of mentioned this before, there's a whole bunch of generic uh, skills there that you you pick up along the way, and um, and we're very happy to um, help uh, students develop their portfolios and develop their CVs, uh, and and part of that help includes uh, recognizing which of those skills are in fact uh, very much transferable to a range of different career um, uh, trajectories. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, and particularly kind of on that topic of skills, if say a student was looking uh, at becoming an environmental consultant or kind of going down that path using this degree, uh, what courses within the Masters of Conservation Biology should they focus more on? And maybe also if you could touch on what kind of skills would be most valuable for the industry and kind of helping them to succeed at going down that path. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so uh, the sorts of skills that that are, are critical for, for that kind of activity um, include uh, some of the numerical skills. So these are all included as part of the, uh, the core, um, core set of units uh, in the program. So, um, and if not, they're also included as part of the foundation um, uh, option set. So, um, so I would say skills like GIS skills, uh, data analysis skills are, are, are critical to those sorts of activities. And I would also um, uh, point to uh, the field-based units where you learn how to sample biodiversity and then the statistics that are involved with, with measuring that, that diversity or, or richness, depending on the measure that you want to, want to take. So, yeah, there's a number of units that, that would feed directly into that, that specific career. Uh, that you, you just mentioned. Definitely. And a lot of those practical units are really fun and where you meet people and get to chat to even mm. locals. I went to Jervis Bay last year as part of my uh, master's course and just talking to locals about their concerns about environmental issues and uh, yeah, helping them to understand more is mm. really awesome and kind of helps develop those skills even more. Mm -hmm. um, so to become a specialist in conservation biology or even environmental consulting uh, seems to never be as easy as maybe we think. Uh, there, is, there should be some fun parts uh, and maybe some challenging parts out there as well. So can you share something interesting or challenging that you have experienced by kind of going down this conservation biology path? Sure. Uh, well, as you say, I mean, there's, there's a, lot of, um, a lot of extremes, both fun and, and hard work. So uh, there's plenty of examples I could choose from, but perhaps one that kind of illustrates that nicely is that uh, for my own research, I do a lot of work uh, in the uh, Amazon basin, uh, the Brazilian Amazon. And it's absolutely fascinating in terms of the diversity and, and, uh, um, and, and, and the sorts of uh, wildlife that you see there. Uh, but there's, there's challenges there as well. Uh, so um, the challenges include remoteness and, and uh, access to resources. Um, and there's also uh, challenges with respect to learning another language. Uh, so um, that's one illustration. Look, just about wherever you end up. So I also work in, in Arid Australia and, and that's got the same sorts of challenges. You know, there's environmental extremes, there's remoteness. Uh, but, you know, some of those landscapes are just absolutely amazing. So, yeah, you know, I think, um, I think <laughs> you often encounter both, both extremes uh, irrespective of, of, of what you're focusing on. Yeah, for sure. Well, that brings us to the end of the questions that uh, I have to ask you. Thank you so much for joining us, Associate Professor Stowe. It was really great to chat with you and to hear more about the Masters of Conservation Biology here at Macquarie. And thank you all for joining us as well. We uh, hope you've had fun listening to uh, what Associate Professor Stowe has to say. If you do have any more questions, please feel free to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation using the link on the screen here. Um, it's definitely a great way to answer any of the questions that you have but also just to find out more about this degree and any of the other degrees here at Macquarie um, and also you can replay this recording if you do want to find out uh, any more information about the course structure or even pathways associated with that um, so thank you again for joining us uh, and we hope to see you here at Macquarie soon